Jewe munda gukora investigation. I like to investigate. Bafungi nsengerejo bundi. When they closed down churches recently. Nakoze survey. I did a survey. Ngo menyi chatu mnyo wafungi nsengerejo. To know why they were closing down those churches. Zimwe mu nsengerejo wafunze. Some of the churches they closed down. Bazi funze kuberi mnyit kwa rileo pastori. They closed them down because of the behaviors of the pastors. Kuberi. Why? Bafitibindi bichaniro. They have other altars they serve to. They are not true servants of Christ. And no, they did not go to do witchcraft and divination. They are on golden concrete. Uh, especially Apotre Jitwaza, Kukone Moyozi, Africa Haguruka. Especially Apostle Dr. Paul Gitkwaza, since he's the visionary of Africa Haguruka. Uh, when they invite you to come and teach in a moment like this, you think it's normal? Uh, it's not my very first time preaching or teaching at a big conference. But it's not a normal situation. Because many are other speakers that could have stood here. Uh, we have various servants of God here in this nation and outside of this country. Who could have stood here to preach and teach what I'm going to share with you. So when someone gives you a scientific term. I will tell you, he has scientific terms. Many pastors no longer sit down and pray for people. Kuko scientific academic theology produces our professionals. Because scientific theology will produce professionals. I have office hours. Sometimes we don't want to say, it takes six hours. For me to cast out one demon, it will take six hours. And that is a lot of time invested. I'm educated. As an educated person. This, I'm just giving you an example of how some people think and what they say. When I was a full-time pastor, now I'm retired. I would encounter people from all churches across Kigali. And I would ask them, why are you coming to my office hours when you have your own pastors? He said, our pastor, where would you even find them? Hey. Pastor How are you not able to reach your pastor? So I would ask them, so you're bringing a tithe to your pastor and bringing problems to me. And they'll tell me, but they are unavailable. Professional. Professionals. So ibirero nibyo bituma niba dushaka kugira itorero ryubaka ibicaniro by'uwiteka. Ibintu bigera kuri bine tugomba gukora. Four things we need to do. Icya mbere. Number 1. Twese abashumba. All of, all of us pastors Return to the source. Kugaruka kuisoko. Need to return to the source. Tukagarura wa numubu tukware vga yesu. Ariko natuke tukwa wanje kujayo. We will bring people back to the authority and leadership of Jesus Christ. But we as far as ourselves have to be there first. That they are on the iron, golden and concrete altars. Arasha kubutunzi. They want riches. Arasha kafemu. They want fame. Those are modern day altars in this day, day and age. So we need to come back under the authority and leadership of Jesus. Uh, who are here speaks Kinyaranda? The preacher will be preaching in Kinyaranda since the majority listen and speaks Kinyaranda. Uh, I thank God for this moment. 
kandi ndagira ngo mbanze shimire ubuyobozi bwa Zion Temple and i also want to thank the leadership of Zion Temple uh, especially apotre gitwaza kuko niwe muyobozi wa Africa haguruka especially apostle dr paul gitwaza since he's the visionary of africa haguruka ah uh, yabantu bagutumiye kwigisha ku munsi nkuyu wumva nyine ari normal when they invite you to come and teach in a moment like this you think it's normal uh, it's not my very first time preaching or teaching at a big conference but it's not a normal situation because many are other speakers that could have stood here uh, we have various servants of God here in this nation and outside of this country who could have stood here to preach and teach what I'm going to share with you. So when someone gives you a time like this, it, there is value in it and you have to be grateful. I also thank uh, Reverend Bansi kuko yaduhaye ibintu byibanze tugomba kumva cyane cyane mu bijyanye n'ibicaniro bya kera because he has established a good foundation regarding the the altars that we have from the ancient times ariko ikibazo gikomeye dufite muri iyi minsi but the biggest challenge we have ntabwo ari ibicaniro nka biriya amaze kutubwira is not the altars the likes he just explained kuko mu bihugu byinshi because in many nations, people are now educated. When you talk about the satanic altars, they think it's ancient things. In some countries, those are altars are there, yes. But in other countries, they are unaware of the existence of such altars. I'll show you why. Okay. Among you who are seated here right now, Ninde wigeze araguza. Who has ever practiced divination? Kumbona na na wari. Hamuno no one. Urabo na mumu wari wa nubi chayi han. In the big crowd like this, ubungore shesha magambo ya bafumu. If I used words similar to what witches use, ngabugira ni imhinga yu mufumu. Such words that the no, we na, we na, na, na translation na shora kubol. Bira kubira ngo awa nuvenshi ibi tuvuga na na reference wa fiti. It means that many people are unaware, so we don't have any reference of what witchcraft looks like because many people don't practice it. Aha, mumuji wa chigari. In the city. Oh, uh, uvuzuti awa nuwa baba nzugu mumani mumani chama woko kuba anuko. In this city of Kigali, if you asked who... If, if you asked in the city of Kigali, um, people who practice or who did some rituals, they would not know. So, in no So, this world we're in, Light to us that these satanic altars don't exist anymore. So when a preacher like Bansi teaches, we think these are exotic teachings. Because we're in a civilized world. But even in this world we're in, People still have altars they sacrifice to. I'll give you three things that will show you which altar you pray to or you serve. Your altar shows what God you pray. The altar you serve shows the God you pray. And when I'm talking about the God, it is that thing which rules your life. Uh, I'm going to 
the the Kenyan author Ngugi wa Thiongo yigeze kuvuga ngo abantu buno munsi once said they worship the unholy trinity of iron gold and concrete yavuze ko abantu buno munsi baramya ibigirwa mana oya barasenga ubutatu butera basenga ubutatu butera bw'ifeza izahabu oya ni iron ibyuma ibyuma gold ifeza izahabu and concrete ni na 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 beton na beton bishaka kuvuga iki what does this mean muri iyi minsi in these days abantu yatubwiraga abantu bakora human sacrifice ibitambo by'abantu he told us about people who practice or who do human sacrifices ariko muri iyi minsi but nowadays umuntu ashobora kwicundi someone can kill another person kugira ngo abone inzu so that they can get their house kugira ngo abone amafaranga so that they can get money so that they can get a child those are our current days idols they are the ones we build altars for and when you build altars for such idols satan satan comes through because the true god is not reigning ikindi kibazo cyakabiri dufite second challenge we have mwarabibonye ko hano mu Rwanda you have seen that here in Rwanda ubitegeko riravuga ngo kugira ngo we pastor now the law says for you to be a pastor ugomba ko ufite diplome ya theology you need a theology degree buriya kimwe mu byishi byitorero one of the things that are destroying the church ni theology twiga muri academic institutions is the theology we learn from academic institutions kuberiki why kubera yuko abenshi batwigisha because many of our professors bari muri cyo twita scientific world view they're in a scientific world view mu myumvire ya gihanga they're in a scientific world view ikubwira ngo amadaimoni ntakibaho that, tell, that tells them that demons don't exist anymore ngo, that tells them ngo ziriya spirits of the ancestors ngiriya myuka ngo bari abazimu the ancestral spirits ngo byari ibintu by'abantu batize uh, were dedicated to the ignorant people ngo bikangaga ibibonetse byose who were afraid of anything that moved i'll give you an example ari aba nyeshuri b'abanyamerika bajyaga baza kwiga ino there were some american students who would come here for an exchange program uh in a in a organization through an organization called go ed no no umwe mu banyeshuri baje no so one of the student who came aza kugira igitekerezo kibi had a bad idea i'd say ngo yumva ikintu kimubwira it's something a voice told him ngo uje kimironko ni hani kigari uje kimironko ku isoko go to kimirongo market uguri byuma biriya birebire by'abakinjaje biriya bikoreshwa mu muri batteries mu kubaga by the big so like knives so, knives they use for the big knives that they used to cut in the butchery stores uzaza ukora ikintu hano ku buryo bazibuka kwa gikoze come and do an action that will speak for itself after you've left arabizana he got the knives ibyuma bibiri two knives ategereje waiting yuko iryo jwi iri mubwira icyo kintu akora for that voice to come back again and tell him what he should use the knives for ibyuma bibiri birebire long knives yari kwica inka what were those knives going to kill a cow ariko agira ubwoba but he was afraid abiha coordinator we he gave the knives to his coordinator coordinator itagira ubwoba and the coordinator was also scared yari umunya america he was american bamushira muri quarantine they put him in a quarantine none bukenje kwigisha so when i came to teach sangwa umunyeshuri ntahari that student was absent that day nabigishaga isomo ryitwa african traditional religion idini ya gakondo ya kinyafrika i thought i taught them a lesson uh, a course called african traditional religion ibingi bibansi yatubwiraga such what the message uh, Bansi was teaching us on. 
And I was showing them how demons operate through religion. And mind you, I was set to teach this course. I told them, please tell this student to come see me later. I need to discuss with him. Then he came. I asked him, that voice that speaks to you, how does it come? He said, it comes and it hovers over me like a cloud. And I feel like my thought process is changing. He even speaks. I ati, ati, he said, yes. That's a demon. And I told him, that's a demon. And I told him, I'm going out to teach you how to fight against that demon. And and those kinds of students were Christian students. I told him, the next time you hear this coming, speak to it. When it speaks to you, respond back. When it comes, and you feel like it's hovering over you, uh, cast it out in the name of Jesus. And he left. So his coordinator came to see me. He said, those things you do as Africans, this thing that this student is suffering from is a scientific disease. It has a name, a medical term. Double personality. It's called double personality disorder. It's a double personality disorder. Coordinator. And I asked him, coordinator. You are a PhD holder in theology. You are an evangelical. Even on the slant of the Pentecostal. No, ne, uramgira yuko mumunashora kwa mimyukibiri. But you're telling me that in one man there exist two spirits. Uwo muka undi wakabiri uyongeraho. That second spirit is a demon. Atariko abanyafrika. And he told me, you Africans. I will use English because that's what he is. The major problem of you Africans. You are not scientific. You see demons. You hear demons. Around every corner. Aha, no horse. I have seen the demons. I told him I have seen demons. I have seen demons. I have cast out demons. Demons are real. Jesus was casting out demons. Paul was casting out demons. And the demons are still around. You know what happened? He said, once you complete this course, the contract we had, contract contract the contract we had with you is terminating as soon as you finish this course. Because even though you're educated, Dr. the doctorate you hold serves you no good. What this shows you, pastor, these pastors were teaching that are taught by professors that don't even believe that demons exist. They will grow churches where demons will be at ease. And when you observe carefully, you will see, you will notice. The more we get educated, the less spiritually aware we are. I'll show you an example. Satan is not looking for physical altars. He's not even looking for wooden altars. 
kuko igicaniro cy'ambere cyubakwa muri gewe because the first altar the biggest altar is built with kuko biriya bicaniro icyo byakoraga what those altars used to do byagaragazaga imana usengi yariyo it would reflect which god you served uno munsi iyo uje gusenga today when you come to pray bigaragaza imana usengi yariyo it shows which god you believe in none uko twese dusige tujya mu nsengero and since now we all go to church satana agomba guhindura strategy satan has to change his strategy none ho ibicaniro byi his altars bikuba kwa mu nsengero are now built even in the churches hello kuko insengero nyinshi muri iyi minsi because many of the churches nowadays zi produce abantu bakorera satani produce so many uh, in, uh, agents for satan ku buryo satani ntabwo akeneye ko twubaka ibicaniro by'amabuye n'ibyibiti so much so the satan is no longer looking for us to build physical altars degambere cyuko bikora this is how they work um murambabarira n'inkoresha ukuri you will uh, excuse my bluntness ejo bundi hano mu Rwanda bafunze insengero recently here in Rwanda they closed down many churches bitatu bya kane bya bafunze insengero barasenga and three quarters of those members of those churches they they pray oh yeah those who closed the churches oh three quarters of those who were implementing the closure of churches pray noneho umuntu umwe naramubwiye and i told one person ndemera ni nyanamwe ko habayeho amakosa yes i agree there's some mistakes and challenges ariko se umunsi abahungu ba noa babonye yambaye ubusa but the day the sons of noah saw his nakedness babigenje bate what did they do umwe yarababwiye one told them muze murebisha no ryabaye hano come and see this great abomination abandi baravuga to ya others said no reka tugende ikigongo gongo we will go backwards dutwikira ubwambure bwa data and cover the nakedness of our father ndabwira ko mwako mwabonaga turimo kurangara and so i asked them you saw us being distracted and in akaba ari mwebwe mushinzwe ibyo bintu and you're the ones in charge kuki mutaturiye urwara ngo mutubwire ngo ariko ko murimo kurangara kandi giye kirimo kubacika why didn't you even nudge us a little bit to tell us to be more careful and vigilant hello tura produce abakristo we are producing believers who don't care about the kingdom of their master batagifite icyo bitayeho kubijyanye n'ubwami bw'Imana bakorera basenga ibyo kubivuga and saying these things ntabwo ari gutukana is not an insult to anyone ahubwo ni ugukwangura abantu ngo bamenye Imana dukorera iyo But rather it's a wake up call for everyone to know which god we serve. Bamenye igicaniro dutambiraho icyaricyo. Let them know which altar we serve to. Ntabwo giye ndi mu barwanya leta. I'm not against the government. Nange insengero zimwe nazifunga. Yes, I myself some of the churches I would close down. Iyo ubatse urusengero utagira toilette. Imagine you're building a church a, a building it doesn't have the restroom a washroom or a Ukajyana abantu gusengera mu kantu katagira madirisha. You take people in a house it doesn't have any windows. Yes, ni byiza gusenga imana. It's good to pray, yes. Ariko imana yacu gomba gusengerwa ahantu ha hafite isu. But God, our God deserves to be worshipped in a place that is deserving, that is well built. Ntabwo ari gupfa kugenda gusa ngo ngo aho twasengera hose ngo imana ibihare. You don't just go and say oh wherever we go God is there. Je niba ndu mushumba? If I am a pastor, ubuzima, health, imibereho, lifestyle yabo bantu of those people ni responsibility yanyu are my responsibility sibyo that's the case ariko ngomba guproduza n'abakristo but i also have to produce believers in christ bazi wo bakorera who know the master they serve kuko cyambere igicaniro kigaragaza imana yawe yariyo because the altar reveals your god icya kabiri second igicaniro cyerekanaho ushyira ibyagaciro byawe the altar reveals what you value and treasure Where you put Where what you, you value. Put what, what you value and treasure. Kuko buriya ibintu bitatu nibyo abantu baha gaciro bikomeye. Three things are major people value them the most. Binakwereka Imana ukorera iyariyo. And they will reveal what God they serve. Icyambere. First, your time. Igihe cyawe. Igihe cyawe. Your time. Icyakabiri. Second, ubwenge bwawe. 
Your intellect. Your talent. Your talent. Third. Your wealth or your riches. Your treasure. Your treasure. Your three T's. Those three T's. Zizakubgirimanu senga nijichani rusengiro. Will show you the God you pray and the altar you serve at. So, iyo tuvuzengo itore rifjubaka ibichani rubju witeka. So when we talk about the church or that builds the altar of the Lord, it has to birth Christians or believers that are under the rulership of Christ Jesus. What is of value? What is or what is their treasure should be of value and used in the kingdom and the altar they serve at. In 24 hours that God gave me, I will give two as a, as a tithe. In the treasures God has given me, I honor God with the tithe and offering. In the talents God has given me, I will use them on his altar. I'm talking modern altars. These modern altars are like this. The day we have believers who act accordingly, who know their God, Daniel said in the latter days, those who know their God, those who know their God, they will do great exploits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Third, third about these altars. He talked about it. It shows the source of your hope and strength. In this time, many people derive their strength from men. That is why they spend most time with people than most time with God. That is why they give so much money in golfing clubs. Why? I discussed with someone recently. And he told me that for you to be a member of a golf club, you need to pay a fee for at least $1,500. I said what? That's a, member, a, a membership for you to become, a fee you pay to become a member. To become a member of the golf club. Give at least uh, a million eight hundred random francs. And I said, for what purpose? And he said, you don't understand. You see, when you're there golfing, that is, you are not there for the sole intent of golfing. There is a networking activity there. And you network with high net worth people. And that's an altar. So if I need strength and power, instead of going to pray to church, I'll go to golf. That is where I'll spend my treasures. Because when you ask me, where do you get your influence? Where do you get your influence and your power? At the golfing club. Drinking from the Sheraton. Going to the Marriott. Where you meet high net worth people. But that is a modern day altar. I know most of you are sad. This is not the information you're looking for. I see Felon. I know in England that they also have modern altars. I see Francine, she's from the US. They have 
They don't have wooden or metallic diamonds. But they have demons. Yeah, double personality. Double personality demons. Yeah, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia demons. I once went to the US. Haza abana bafite ibintu bya group homes ziba bashyiramo abantu bafite ibyo bintu by'ibitrubure byo mu mutwe. Mental troubles. There came some people who uh, took care of those people that had mental trouble. No, no, nde umugabo umwe mu bari kumwe. And I observed one man they were together. Ndamwitegereza gutya. I observed him intently. Mbwira uwo mwana wera uyu mugabo afite ama diamond. And I told that person who was with me this man is demon possessed nyemerera nyaheho gato yo turebe kivomo let me cast out a little bit arambira tutanyicira kazi he said i beg you please do not interfere in my work ati kuko ushobora gucyaha bakanyirukana because if you cast out i might be fired no and so muragira ama diamond mukagendana nayo nta kibazo and i said so you are fine going around with demons with no problem you are cohabitating with them fere ndabeshya Am I lying, fellow? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Francis, I'm just going to be on the phone. Go. 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 Many pastors no longer sit down and pray for people. Kuko scientific academic theology produces our professionals. Because scientific theology will produce professionals. Ngira masaha ya kazi. I have office hours. Sometimes kugira ngo nzirukane umudayi umuntu umwe it takes 6 hours. For me to cast out one demon it will take 6 hours. Nta mwanya mbifiti. And that is a lot of time invested. Kujewe I'm educated. As an educated person ariko ubwo ndabivuga guko niko siko mbikora ariko nziko ariko bikorwa this i'm just giving you an example of how some people think and what they say nyiri pastor full time when i was a full time pastor ubu ndi retired now i'm retired oh nabonaga abantu bavuye mu matoro yose hano muri kigali i would encounter people from all churches across kigali habo rego kuki muza kunde bakari mufite aba pastor banyu and i would ask them why are you coming to my office hours when you have your own pastors kwa ngo pastor wacu he said, our pastor, where would you even find them? Hey. Pastor How are you not able to reach your pastor? <laughs> so I would ask them, so you're bringing a tithe to your pastor and bringing problems to me. And they'll tell me, but they are unavailable. Professional. Professionals. So if you have a Niba dushaka kugira itorero ryubaka ibicaniro by'uwiteka. And this is why if you want to build a church that builds the altar to the Lord. Reka ngane kugusoza. Uh, I'm getting to the conclusion. Yes. Ibintu bigera kuri bine tugomba gukora. Four things we need to do. Icya mbere. Number 1. Twese abashumba. All of, all of us pastors return to the source. Kugaruka ku isoko. Need to return to the source tukagarura abantu mu butware bwa Yesu ariko natwe twabanje kujyayo we will bring people back to the authority and leadership of Jesus Christ but we as first ourselves have to be there first jewe nkunda gukora investigation i like to investigate bafunga insengero ejo bundi when they closed down churches recently nakoze survey i did a survey ngo menye icyatumye bafunga insengero to know why they were closing down those churches zimwe mu nsengero bafunze some of the churches they closed down bazifunze kubera imyitwarire yabo pastor they closed them down because of the behaviors of the pastors kubera iki why bafite ibindi bicaniro baturaho ntabwo ari abagaragu ba Yesu Kristo they have other altars they serve to they are not true servants of Christ ntabwo ari kuvuga ko bagiye kubandwa no guterekera and no they did not go to do witchcraft and divination bari kuri ya kuri ya kuri cyagicaniro Chizahabu, Nifeza, Nabeto. Iron, gold, and concrete. They are on the iron, gold, and concrete altars. Arashaka Butunzi. They want riches. Arashaka fame. They want fame. Izuni, Izuni, Ibjoni, Nibichan, Rubji, Gino Siturim. 
Those are modern day altars in this day, day and age. So we need to come back under the authority and leadership of Jesus. Second, if we need power, Jesus has given the power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. We have problems. We have problems. We are saying we are in the spirit-filled churches. One time they closed down the church and they took the instruments. And so I went to advocate to get those back. And you know our government is an easygoing government. They are very understanding. So they say, it's okay, invite those people over, we will explain them why we closed down their church and took the instruments. When we got there, I was their advocate, mind you, one disgraced me. He, he said, we're not like those uh, Pentecostal Protestant people. Uh -uh, not pro Pentecostal, those Called Protestants. We are not, at, not, at like, not like. We are not like the so-called Protestants. We grew up in this loud noise. We'll grow with it. We will stay in it. Now imagine the case against them already is saying it's it's prohibited to cause noise pollution. Now you are justifying yourself saying you will stay in the noise. We are spirit filled. We ought to shout and scream. Who told you that the power of the spirit is in his shout, in the person's shout? If you speak loudly, you're shouting, you speak with so much effort, it does not mean you are spirit-filled. That is the power of your voice. The power of the spirit will be seen in the results outside. When I speak to a demon, I don't need to shout. In the name of Jesus, with the authority we have received from him, I tell the demon, demon, in the name of Jesus, get out of that person. And the demon will go. When I'm preaching the gospel, who told you that speaking loud is conviction? I can speak with a soft voice. But when the power is there, the words will penetrate and transform. You know sometimes people say, we need the noise. Okay, then if you need the noise, get out of here. Get out of this nation. Kuko, you make noise, your church is closed. Because noise pollution will lead to the closure of your church. They tell you. But I could give. Your noise must remain inside your four walls. That's an international law. Not this. I'm, I'm just living next to your church. You don't need to disturb me in what I'm doing. Some people now even use the excuse saying, we won't go to church because this church is so loud, its voice reaches to uh -uh. us anyways. No, no. They are not coming to church. We are going to make our instrument loud to find oh. them where they are. Don't disturb him in his business. If you want to reach out to him, knock on his door. Go and evangelize. But don't make noise. This is a fair warning I'm giving you. Once they reopen the churches, don't make noise. 
I can prophesy to you without closing my eyes. Bye next week was our zifungui. I am not the one who opened these churches. But once they reopen them, I don't know. Fairly speaking, they tell you a list of requirements you need to fill, so, and then they reopen. You need to do that. Now back to the real power. If we were truly power-filled churches, this city will be completely transformed. The spirit came down one day. Peter preached, 3,000 people got saved. Just one day. One day. I served for 11 years in the parish I led. Maybe we had 500 believers when I joined. I left with maybe when there were 2,500. In 11 years. Peter would have preached one day. My whole congregation, my whole church would be complete. I'm looking for more power. I'm asking God to give me more power. Because to face these modern day demons, this spirit we have out here is not enough. Our tires are not well prepared. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. Third, the word of God. Because altars are mindsets. And the word of God has the power to transform our thinking. You know the true God. And you pray. And let me uh, reach to the conclusion. Fourth. The altar of prayer. Because for you to cast out all evil spirits, uh, those who have lived in areas where they have cows. Ah, good enough. Every house that has a cow in it, at least in Rwanda, at least here in Rwanda, every house that has a cow or many, would have it wasn't an altar. It was a place where they burnt. Uh, we would have a fireplace. Fireplace. For, for, for the cows. It was, it was called an altar, but it's not an altar. It's a fireplace. It's a really. fireplace. Yeah. What I liked about the fireplace. The, the, the smoke that will arise from that fireplace. In the night, would chase away the mosquitoes. In the day, you cast away the, the flies. So when the church lights up the altar of prayer, the prayers that arise will chase away all the flies, the demonic flies that are out there. Did you know that the Bible compares demons to flies? Um, the word Beelzebul is the king of flies. That's why where there is many wounds, demons, it will be so easy for demons to attack. Out of going in depth on this, but we don't have time. So, if pastor in every pastor in Rwanda, in Burundi, in Congo, they need to understand. Because this Great Lakes region contains so many demons that operate over the wounds of what has happened in the history of our region. So, the altar of prayers. It has to be in five locations. 
has to be in me. So I have an altar in me. So when I'm walking, I'm an altar. I'm a moving altar. I'm a moving altar. And every believer should be a moving altar. Meaning that wherever I'm going, they have to know who my God is. They have to know where I put my treasures. They have to know where my power and talent is coming from. That is a testimony. The moving altar. Second location. In my home. There needs to be an altar. A permanent altar. Many things that has led to this destruction. People think we're building the altar only when we're praying, fasting, maybe doing three or four oh, yeah. days. No, but the altar has to be permanent. In the evening when I lay down, I will put the fireplace and the smoke will go up. When, when the demons will try to enter, they will say that is that place you cannot penetrate because In the morning when I wake up, I'll say, Lord, your altar. I'll challenge you. Whether you're in the US, UK, Rwanda, all across the world. How many here pray with their spouses and their children at least once a day? I know that even some pastors don't do that. There's no altar at your home. You have the altar at church, no altar at home. That's why you'll be stricken. Wherever you forgot to leave your altar at is where Satan will come through. Where the altar needs to operate. I am surprised and amazed by the Indians. You should visit their shops here. They have their altars in the corner of the shop. They have their altars, their idols, like the ones with the elephant. It will be there. You will see it. Before they open their shop in the morning, perfume. They will light up some the perfume for that the incense for that. Oil. When you enter a shop of an Indian man, the funny smell in the morning. They have very very funny smells in the morning. And you will see the altar of their idol. Similar, we should be walking with the God who is serving us. We should walk with that altar in us. Then when you reach at work, you dedicate your work. And you work like someone who just dedicated his work to the Lord. And now in the whole country, every church should be an altar. You know what I have observed? All the places where I worked and served, you start with the prayer room, I will tell you about where I've been and you will think regarding to your own situation. I led this organization called AAA Irakura. and it grew. We had a prayer room. When we didn't have any location, physical location, we turned that uh, prayer room into an office. And I was dying from within. And I told God, even though we've turned this space into an office space, I feel like we've done wrong. I told the colleagues at work, so we built an even bigger prayer place bigger than the room. 
And I recruited an, a person in charge of that prayer place. And they asked me, are we literally paying someone a salary for them to pray? And I asked them, but we, pray, we, we pay watchmen, don't we? To understand the concept of an altar in the church. In the church. I know we give salaries to many people, but I, I don't know if we pray the intercessors or people that da are in the church. When David returned the ark of the Lord and built a, no, a place for it, 24 7. He established worshippers 24-7 who worshipped him. And established wages for them so that God will be worshipped from Monday to Sunday. We built a new church at my parish. And we built a prayer room. If I had had five more years in my mandate... I would have established full-time prayer, prayer warriors. And I would have established a way to reward them or a welfare process so that they know when they go to pray, it's not just in vain. One of the pastors we served together recently yeah. told me, you know the room, the prayer room we had? And he, said, he told me, we're planning to partition it. One part will be an office and the rest will stay as the prayer room. Alter to the Lord. Most of the times what Satan does the church started by praying. And it ended by preaching and not praying. Hello? Many church, all the churches I know, they start with full force prayers and end with full force preaching and no prayers. You need to build the altar to the Lord. I'll conclude here before we welcome uh, the bishop. I do apologize, bishop. We, we, we get so excited and we forget about time. Um, if we are to become churches that build the altar to the Lord, number one, let us return to the authority and leadership of Jesus Christ. Because if you are led by Jesus Christ, you have no problem, no encounters, and no challenge with the demons. You have authority over over all the authorities of Satan. You need the power in the spirit. I still need this power in my age. Even unto death, I will still need this power. Because I want my bones to be like the ones of Elisha, raising people out of the death. Third, we, we need to understand and share the word of God as how God intended it to be shared, not according to the modern day theology. Honor God with your time. Honor God with your talents. Honor God with your treasures. Then, what will keep us connected is to be on the altar of prayer. I will be the moving altar. 
urusengero rugira igicaniro gihoraho the church will have a permanent altar mungo zacu haba ibicaniro bihoraho at home will have permanent altar kuko ingo zigize ibicaniro bihoraho ubwo igihugu cyose cyaba kiri mu mwotsi ku buryo nta dayimoni yakongera kuhagenda because if each home has a permanent altar that means there's permanent smoke in the whole country that covers and protects the country mane bahu mugisha may god bless you ariko ariko ambasigiriye challenge and i'll leave you with this challenge will you build the altar esuzubaka icyo gicaniro wowe ubwawe yourself nabo yobora and those you lead mu rugo rwawe cyangwa mu itorero in your home a church kuko nituza nubwame bwa Yesu because if we bring the kingdom of jesus indimigisha yose zazikurikiye all other blessings will follow